Hi, this is Akiba from Freak Labs and uh, Tokyo Hackerspace. This is a talk for uh, hacking a Geiger counter in nuclear Tokyo. This is the Geiger counter that we started with. It's a vintage Geiger counter that our friend Ryuzium got. At the time, there were no more Geiger counters available, and so this is what we had to work with. I started by opening up the box and checking out the insides. We had discussed in the hackerspace that uh, we could probe the speakers and extract the counts per minute from there. And so that was, uh, that was one of the things I was investigating. After I made sure the speaker was accessible, I soldered wires to it so I could check it out on the oscilloscope. This is a scope capture of what the clicks look like. Once I was able to see this, then I, I knew I could feed it into a controller and be able to count the click events. Now it's time to hook it up to the PC and start writing the software. I spent a few minutes writing the software just to make sure it, it would work. After that, then it was on to the next task. The Geiger counter was originally meant to be a field instrument. That means that it's battery powered. Since I wanted to do long term uh, monitoring, I had to figure out how to externally power the device. So I did this by uh, covering the batteries with tape and attaching wires to it. And those wires would uh, feed into an AC adapter and power the device. So once I got that out of the way, then I decided to add a wireless interface. The reason was because I wanted to keep the Geiger counter outside, but I didn't want to run any uh, thick cables out onto my balcony. Any thick cables would have uh, forced me to keep my door slightly open, and since there's radiation and uh, uh, fallout outside, it, it was just not a good thing to do. Once I was able to collect the data wirelessly, then I wrote an interface from my PC to the internet, and so the data would automatically upload to a service called Patch Bay. Patch Bay is a sensor data aggregation service, and uh, it's very useful for, uh, for collecting sensor data. Finally, to protect the device, then I, uh, I used the original box that it was shipped in, and uh, I mounted all the devices inside the box. I taped all the devices down because we were going through a lot of aftershocks, and uh, if any large aftershock hit, then uh, it would potentially uh, knock the devices around. Finally, I closed up the box and put it on my balcony. As of this video, I'm still collecting data and sending it up to Patch Bay, and uh, that data feed is uh, being consumed by multiple radiation maps set up by other people and uh, informing the public about the radiation readings around Japan. <coughs> this is the actual Geiger counter in action. You can see uh, that it's covered in the box, and actually it's raining today, and so it's good that I have the box here. This Geiger counter has been working for approximately three weeks now, or two weeks now. You can hear the, the clicks. And right now it's uh, registering approximately uh, 60 to 80 counts per minute. Moving forward, Tokyo Hackerspace is working with RDTN.org, which is a diverse group of people around the world, and they're trying to create radiation maps for Japan. One thing we realized from uh, this whole ordeal is that uh, we're going to need to monitor the radiation levels uh, in real time and for over a long term in order to see what the real environmental impact is and uh, how long radiation levels stay elevated in uh, certain areas. And for this effort, one of the things that we're developing in Tokyo Hackerspace is a Geiger counter with an integrated web client. And so uh, all you would need to do is put the Geiger counter outdoors, and then it would automatically upload the data onto the internet. Well, once we finish this, we're going to try and get these into the hands of people around Japan so we can start monitoring in uh, different areas. So that's about it. I think uh, one of the last things I want to say is that this whole experience has taught me that everyone has skills they can contribute to a disaster situation like this or maybe somewhere else in the world. So in my case, it was electronics because that's my specialty. But in the hackerspace, we had artists, writers, chefs, uh, IT people, programmers. Everyone was contributing their own skills and in their own way in order to, uh, to turn this whole ordeal into something positive. And so uh, you probably already heard about Chris Harrington, who started up his own shelter. And we, had a, we have many other projects going on, like solar lanterns, uh, providing coloring books for kids, etc. And so all of that is just coming from the different uh, skills of different people that are uh, contributing to the relief and rebuilding. So thanks for listening to me talk. In the hackerspace we believe that the next steps will be even more difficult and that will be the uh, rebuilding of Japan. 
And uh, for that, everyone's skills are going to be needed. So uh, hopefully we can all work together. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Akiva from Rick Labs in Tokyo Hackerspace. And this is my crib. Wrong show? Oh. Ah. Uh, take two.